Hi everyone, I would like to welcome you in this presentation on machine learning based predictors for ICU admission of COVID-19 patients. My name is Nagam al Hawass and I'm a co-author in this paper with Dr. Serkan Kartal. Moving to the presentation outline. In this presentation, first, I'm going to present a brief introduction. Then we will share with you the motivation and the project objectives. Then proceed to the materials that used in this project along with the methodology. Then move to the results and discussion. By the end of this presentation, we conclude it by summarizing the key points. The declaration of COVID-19 as a pandemic has emerged a major challenge for the health sector. Given the increase in number of infections, the variation in symptoms, which range from mild that can be treated at home to intense that require hospitalization. There is still a gap between the number of infections and the ability to deal with them in terms of the available resources. The healthcare generates massive data sets from medical follow-up results of patients that are updated daily or even hourly. There are various healthcare aspects that machine learning can support. The early prediction of acute cases of COVID-19 patients may contribute to saving their lives by contributing to the early allocating of the resources in the ICU. Motivation and project objective. First, to explore the patterns in healthcare records and leverage these data to investigate the relationship between the abnormal vital science and the ICU admission. Identify the suitable pre-processing understanding features, build and evaluate significantly accurate model. Assist the doctor in the ICU, which is a high-stress environment. Materials and methodology. From an open access repository, available data set is acquired. It's supplied from the Hospital of Sirio Lebanese, Sao Paulo, Brasilia. There are 1,925 samples which gathered from 385 patients and each patient has 5 records, along with 231 columns that contain the features. There are 3 main classes of information that can be extracted from this dataset. Demographic information, blood test results, and the most important for us, the vital information. For the data pre-processing, first we handle the categorical type by finding the columns that are not numeric and performing hot coding to put dummy numeric values. Then go for the data imputation. Actually, not all clinical exams and the vital tests were performed completely for all patients. Thus, we can find a huge number of missing values that range from 500 to 1140 um, missing values beer column. So the data set suffer from sparsity, which present a challenge as it makes the data analysis problematic and implies efficiency reductions. So we go for different three ways to, um, to deal with this problem and tested the results of each method on a hypothetical myth model. First, we uh, use the mean of all other values of that column or filling the missing values of each patient by using the mean value of his five records or based on the patient's ICU, uh, ICU experience. Actually, we found that the best method is the third one, which is based on the question, has the patient ever experienced the ICU in any of his records? We took the records of the patients who admitted to the ICU in all of their five records and fill in the missing values by using the mean of each column separately. The same process was done for patients who did not enter the ICU in all of their five records as well. The records of the rest of the patients were negligated. The analysis of the results of the data imputation prompted us to think about choosing the best samples 
in this study. So here we will try to go for two different considerations and compare the results, either to go with the data samples as a stateless or as a group data. Stateless data, considering sample as belonging to a different patient, actually, as we said uh, from the data imputation approach that we take, we only going to consider 1,110 samples, which is gathered from 222 patients. As the main goal for this study is to use the abnormal vital science or or to use the vital science away from a specific patient's case or a specific age group, etc. And there are many studies in the literature use the same data set as a stateless data. So the patient identifier is negligated. So we drop the uh, possibility that the previous record may affect the current record state. Group data. Samples in the data set can be grouped based on the identifier of each patient. In the first data set that we get in the previous stage, we said that we consider 1,110 samples, which means 222. Actually, after grouping the samples we, by calculating the mean values of the five records, we get impellence data set. As you can see from the figure in the left, we only have about 14% uh, of patients who admitted to the ICU compared to 800, 8,500% of the patients who never admitted to the ICU. Actually, this is lead to poor performance in prediction, especially for the classes of patients who have been admitted to the ICU, and therefore it cannot be adopted. So we choose to go and calculate the mean value of the five records of each patient and apply this approach on the initial data set, which contains 1,925 samples. But if the patient has experienced the ICU even once in one of his five records, the ICU column is set to one. But if never, then it will set to zero. And Actually, here we get um, a balanced data set that contains um, like 385 samples. We can see that about 500% of them are admitted to the ICU, whereas um, it's about like 49% of them not admitted to the ICU. For the feature selection, actually, uh, first we depend on the field knowledge, the vital information or the vital signs that are available in the data set that we used are the body temperature, plus rate, respiration rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturation. Actually, these signs were extended by calculating mean, median, min, max, and differences of each sign. The vital information useful. Actually, they are very useful in detecting the ICU admission. And this plot shows the results of plotting the variance of each column of the vital science in this data set between the patients who either have been admitted or not admitted to the ICU in all of their five records. Then we um, go for person correlation coefficient to examine the strength of the, the um the relationship and permutation importance to provide us insight of the like provides insight into a machine learning model's behavior as it estimates and rank the feature importance based on the impact of each feature that it has on the trained model's prediction from all the feature selection method that we used we come into two main results first Large number of features in the data set don't contribute to any impact on the prediction. The vital signs are the main influencer. So in addition to uh, lactic, we can say that it contributes more than the blood test results. For the model selection, actually the data set properties are crucial as it has a large impact or a huge impact on the selected models. After taking into consideration the type of our problem, the size of data set, as we said, we have a very 
uh, limited number of samples in the data set and also the number of features as we want to um, to use or select the vital uh, science information so we we choose different machine learning algorithm and build binary classif uh, classifier which are the logistic regression SVM with linear and radial basis function kernel and along with the artificial neural network for the artificial neural network actually a sequential fully connected uh, a sequential fully connected layered architecture are used in which each neuron input is connected to every neuron in the next layer it consists of one input layer and three hidden <coughs> my apologies and uh, three hidden layers along with the output layers the sigmoid is used as activation function of the output layer whereas the ReLU, which is rectified linear activation unit is used as the activation function for all the hidden layers training phase for the training phase actually we did four compression between two portion with two different consideration we take the data set as stateless mean that we gonna consider 1110 samples and we consider the data as a group data by considering only 385 samples by grouping them as we mentioned uh, by calculating the mean value of um, each column so uh, then consideration different consideration with feature selection and without feature selection as we said that we are mainly interested in the vital science model performance and estimations we evaluated the performance of the model using three main metrics firstly we measure the model's testing accuracy to evaluate the percentage of the correct predictions that was made for the testing data then we calculate the precision and recall and to get an insight of the model relevancy and the model competence we measure the <coughs> we measure both as we said the precision and the recall finally to measure how well the prediction are rank, ranked the area under the receiver operator characteristic curve interpretation for the classifiers were made results and discussions we can say that we have been effectively able to build a model that predicts the need for intensive care based on the vital information Overall, the trained model's results range from moderate to accu accurate prediction results. The classification accuracies, as you can see from this plot, reached 98% for predicting the ICU admission with SVM with the radial basis kernel function for both pre-trained data consideration. And actually, it scored 95% uh, area under the curve. So such model can be deployed in the healthcare decision system to help in the early prediction of the ICU admission and therefore it help in the early allocation of the resources, especially, you, especially that it uses only the vital science results, which is actually considered to be quick and easy and inexpensive as it requires less medical settings. Also, we can say that see that the linear SVM showed a high performance with the stateless data, elaborating the feature selection that we have mentioned before as it scored 95%. However, it performed lower with the group data with and without the feature selection and it achieved 81%. We can see that the artificial neural network performed good for the stateless data and it scored 97 even without the feature selection. However, it showed slightly poor performance with the group data almost due to the limitation uh, in number of data samples. Uh, also, we can say that the results just imply that there is yeah, a strong relationship between the abnormal vital science results and the ICU admission. On the other hand, the group data achieved unreliable results actually for both cases with and without feature selection. Um, but however, we can say that the group data with the feature selection shows a slightly better performance 
And one important observation about the linear SVM and radial basis function SVM that both share comparable performance when utilized with the stateless consideration of the samples in conjunction with the feature selection based on the vital science and the feature performance. Importance, so. Uh, for the area under the curve, the highest and the best area under the curve value was achieved by the radial basis function SVM, which is 95%. And uh, this is with the stateless data consideration with the features selection. Both logistic regression and linear SVM reached to uh, 93 and 91 respectively uh, under same consideration. Nevertheless, the same classifiers give poor performance using group data samples with feature selection um, with uh, area under the curve, like range from 62 to 84%. So to conclude this, um, to conclude this presentation, we want to say that the vital information are useful in detecting the ICU admission, and thus we can use it to enhance the decision making in hospitals and clinics. Statistical techniques were applied on the health records of the COVID-19 patients. The samples were extracted with different experiments to ensure that the results will enhance the prediction by choosing a good data imputation techniques. Then several feature selection techniques were utilized based on the field knowledge, person correlation coefficient, and finally by taking the permutation importance of a hypothetical model to maintain the features that are the highest relationship with the target variable. Then two versions of the data were obtained as stateless and group data with and without the feature selection, and we, we were able to build different model with um, various machine learning algorithms, logistic regression, linear support, vector machine, uh, and also uh, SVM with radial basis function and artificial neural network. Model results suggest that it has a good generalization, and we can say that the SVM with the radial basis function shows a very good generalization and thus it can um, easily deploy to the healthcare system to support making decision as it only requires the vital sign results which is easy, inexpensive and require less medical setting. This is our presentation. Thank you for joining us. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you so much.